These are our favorite gun-wielding, trench coat-wearing heroes of the night. I was born when she kissed me. I died when she left me. I lived a few weeks while she loved me. Welcome to Slightly Dangerous, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 film noir actors. This is the second time that you've laid hands on me. When you're slapped, you'll take it and like it. Pretty detective stories and shadowy crime thrillers known as film noir were the rave of early Hollywood. And for this list, we've looked at the actors that became popular for starring as the mysterious leading men and shady characters of these crime dramas. You've been lying in there trying to think of a way to kill me. I've been asleep. Don't lie to me, because I'm not going to lie to you. All right, I was, but were you any different? You were gonna duck out of here and hand me over to Sackett, so we're even. Number 10, Richard Conti. How about it? Attaining stardom, depicting gangsters and world-weary heroes. Conti's movie appearances are made brilliant by his electrifying energy and enigmatic persona. His breakout performance in the film noir genre came in 1945's The Spider. Sit down and watch, it's a party. Although a B-rated movie, his performance was impressive enough to get him lead roles in other movies in the genre, including Thieves Highway and Cry of the City. His unique talent is apparent in his roles in New York Confidential, where he portrays a ruthless hitman, as well as Highway Dragnet, where he plays a war veteran on the run from a false murder accusation. He also made a lasting impression in film noir classics such as Call Northside 777 and Whirlpool. Number 9, Robert Ryan. I understood you were such a moral character, Doctor. Not the type to make passes at somebody else's wife. Of course, Leonora doesn't surprise me. Although he wasn't the typical suave leading man, Ryan's rugged looks and intense acting nevertheless made for movie magic. Often portraying brutal villains and toughened cops, he stood out from his on-screen peers. I don't want your money. You can't buy me off. Now get into the living room. No! His betrayal of a murderer in the anti-Semitism film Crossfire was exceptional and led to it being the first B-movie to receive a Best Picture nomination. He was known for his strong emotional performances and his larger-than-life portrayals and drew great attention even in co-starring roles in Clash by Night and Act of Violence. Upstairs. Other notable roles include him playing a retired boxer in The Setup and an abusive millionaire in Caught, demonstrating great emotional range in both. Ryan showed so much screen presence that even his mediocre vehicles are something to look forward to. You make me do it. Why do you make me do it? You know you're gonna talk. I'm gonna make you talk. I always make you punks talk. Why do you do it? Number eight. Peter Lorre. Not long after coming to Hollywood, Lorre found himself with a contract to Columbia Pictures. However, his unusual looks made it difficult finding suitable parts for him. Five thousand dollars. You will clasp your hands together at the back of your neck. I intend to search your offices, Mr. Spade. I warn you, if you attempt to prevent me, I shall certainly shoot you. Frequently typecast as a sinister foreigner, Lori featured heavenly in crime dramas and immediately established himself in the film noir genre. Lending credence to his undeniable talent, playing a variety of roles from a mystery novelist in The Mask of Demetrios to a macabre artist in The Verdict. I guess I always get the bad ones, Vicky. Oh, but I assure you, Lottie, I'm very good. One of his most famous films is The Maltese Falcon where he portrayed an unscrupulous criminal after a jewel-encrusted falcon statuette. He found more success in the 1940 classic film noir Stranger on the Third Floor, where he played a man attempting to clear himself of a murder accusation. What do you want? Who are you? Hey! Wait a minute! Number 7. Edward G. Robinson. Nice clean job you did on Brian. Remembered for his enthralling depictions of ruthless gangsters, some of his best performances appear in film noirs. In Key Largo, Robinson gives a riveting performance as a gangster who takes over a hotel amid a hurricane. He 
He shows a softer side in the films The Woman in the Window and Scarlet Street, playing lonely, middle-aged men caught in lethal situations due to a woman. The Woman in the Window was nominated for Best Scoring of a Dramatic or Comedy Picture, while Scarlet Street is considered the best of the genre. Chris, get away from me! Chris! Chris! One of Robinson's most memorable performances is of insurance investigator Barton Keyes in Double Indemnity. Widely regarded as a classic, it is often cited as the film that set the standard for the film noirs that followed. If there's not one single case of suicide by leap from the rear end of a moving train. And you know how fast that train was going at the point where the body was found? 15 miles an hour. Now how can anybody jump off a slow moving train like that with any kind of expectation that he would kill himself? Number six, Brian Donlevy. Stupid, yes. On the wrong foot, yes. But he isn't one of those mugs that don't belong to human society. Noted for playing treacherous tough guys, Don Levy made his stamp in film noir history with excellent performances in Kiss of Death and The Big Combo. Let him have it. Let him have it now, right now. Wait a minute. What's the matter? You fellas gone loony? He elaborated on his tough persona, portraying a crooked politician in The Glass Key and a surgeon in the Nazi drama Hangmen Also Die. In his most famed leading role, he went against type, playing a millionaire whose young wife plots to kill him. A marriage to a woman who accepted my love, yet despised me so thoroughly she resorted to murder. Critics praised Impact saying, as far as modest film noirs go, this is one of the best. He left quite a legacy, and his obituary stated that any consideration of the American film noir of 1940s would be incomplete without him. It's all right with me, Captain. Number five, Sterling Hayden. All right, stay if you want to, but don't you go getting any ideas. A leading man in film noirs for most of his career. His rapid delivery of lines and portrayal of hard-drinking, calculating characters made him popular. <laughs> yeah, don't laugh. I might just have a way of getting it out of you. I can take anything you can give. We'll see about that. Excitingly playing criminals, planning a heist in the asphalt jungle, and the killing. Both hold the distinction of being classics in the genre, and Quentin Tarantino has said that the killing was a significant influence on his 1992 film, Reservoir Dogs. Hayden also took on enthralling roles as members of law enforcement in Crime of Passion and Suddenly. Hayden's career took off after his role in the asphalt jungle, and throughout the 1950s, he remained a mainstay in the genre. Come on, Spiller, was Morgan dead when you got there? Number four, Dan Duria. It's only blackmail, baby, when you're dumb enough to get caught. He found his niche portraying disdainful antagonists in film noirs such as Criss Cross and Johnny Stole Pigeon. In his most famous roles, he portrays an unscrupulous con artist in Scarlet Street and a dirty ex-cop in The Woman in the Window. What do you take me for, some kid? I don't know what you mean. And all this time I've been trying to give you a break, trying to get you out of this jam. Derry possessed a menacing glare and a devious smile that made him perfect to play low-life criminals. He is outstanding and manhandled, playing a greedy, cash-crazed murderer. There were times he was cast in more sympathetic roles, such as in Black Angel and Too Late for Tears. He would say about his on-screen persona, I knew with my 155 pound weakling body, I couldn't pass for a leading man, and I had to be different. So I chose to be the meanest SOB in movies. Number three, Richard Widmark. A standout in his very first movie appearance. For his role as a giggling, sociopathic killer, he was nominated for an Academy Award. In his most notorious scene, in Kiss of Death, he pushes a woman in a wheelchair down a flight of stairs. <laughs> From then on, Widmark was typecast as similar depraved characters. Portraying a brutal pickpocket in Pick Up on South Street and an ambitious hustler in Night in the City.
later branched out into more heroic leading roles, with notable film appearances in Panic in the Streets and Don't Bother to Knock, alongside Marilyn Monroe. Portraying a doctor with 48 hours to locate a killer infected with pneumonic plague, and a pilot attracted to an unstable babysitter in the latter. What do you want? Hearts and flowers forever and ever, love? Don't be afraid to say it, it's not a dirty word. Number two, Robert Mitchum. That evens us, now fold your hands or I'll fold them for you. You talk big, mister. Appearing in one of the best film noirs of all time, Mitchum is often mentioned when discussing the genre. His central turn in Out of the Past, as a detective endangered by a treacherous woman, made the film a standout. You remember Kathy, don't you? Yeah, I remember Kathy. Sit down. He's considered a forerunner of the anti-heroes and became popular in film. Examples of this are Mitchum's portrayals in Macau and His Kind of Woman, as a loner anti-hero who gets entangled in dangerous missions. I'll fold up your tent. Why, you stupid! Oh! He gives exceptional performances in Where Danger Lives as a doctor whose life takes a turn for the worse and in steamed film noir, Crossfire, as Sergeant Keeley who helps to investigate a murder. <laughs> Appearing in around 20 film noirs, he established a place in the genre. What are you looking for? Huh? Well, just a few hundred thousand dollars. There's nothing here. All right, where is it? Number one, Alan Ladd. Leave her alone. Lie down, Rover. You need a new mouth. Dashing, daring, and dangerous. This icon made his big splash on the silver screen as a hitman in This Gun for Hire, establishing his eternal presence in the genre. They're on their own. They don't need anybody. Well, this one could do with a friend. So could you. Many of Ladd's most famous movies are film noirs such as This Gun for Hire, The Glass Key, and The Blue Dahlia. He played an ex-bomber pilot suspected of murdering his unfaithful wife in The Blue Dahlia, while in The Glass Key, he portrays the right-hand man of a corrupt politician. You've got the wrong lipstick on, mister. His teaming with Veronica Lake further cemented his iconic status in film noir history as they were a popular couple and made four films together. Later, outstanding performances in Calcutta and Chicago Deadline proved his acting was nothing to scoff at. But I'm the one that's going to go to prison. What am I going to do? That's your problem. I've never been to prison. Come on, beat it. Do you agree with our list? Yeah. Which actors from these crime thrillers are you familiar with? For more classic movie top tens published every Friday, be sure to subscribe to Slightly Dangerous. Don't anybody move, you're covered from the door.